Ellen. And I'm Luke. Welcome to Show of the Weekend. Now, this week, we went back into Tamriel to try and defeat Luke's dreaded frost troll nemesis with the aid of mod-added, time-altering catnip. Oh, no, I made the <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> It didn't work. I'll never be free of that troll. But at least this week we did get our hands on the latest expansion for LEGO Dimensions, which includes uh, Gremlins, Sonic, uh, and Fantastic Beasts as well, and many more. Yeah, we even tried out some multiplayer, but uh, Luke, you're a little bit of a uh, sore loser. Oh, was that Joker? Seconds away. Blue, number one. Who was, who was playing the Joker? Hmm? Luke, who was playing Joker? Me. No, it was me. And who was playing Gizmo? You weren't filming the game, you don't have any proof. No, I do. I was Joker. No, I was Joker. Look, look, look. No. I'm blue. Oh, no, it's changed colour. Literally yeah. changed. No! Oh, there you go. <laughs> proof as if it were needed. Damn it. Controllers, no, Ellen. Trust the controllers. No, I won. And maybe you would have won if you'd spent more time playing the game and less time in Harry Potter's cupboard under the stairs reading his book about ships. This one's very interesting. The British and the American frigates, the, right. the Chesapeake. Chesapeake's pretty I mean, we're, we're here to see video games, Luke. Can, can we go? I want to go and see this Fantastic was, Beasts. Yeah, we, we can in a minute, but I just I just want you to understand but, that this was the turning point when the British Navy realised that it you know, no longer necessarily controlled the seas. Yeah, we were on a bit of a Harry Potter kick, weren't we? Remember that magic suitcase from Fantastic Beasts and where to find them? No. But we we have a clip. But Luke, I had to leave early. Remember? I, I didn't go in the suitcase. Then what came out of the suitcase? Show of the weekend, show of the weekend, show of the weekend, show of the weekend, show of the weekend. So Ellen, what have you been playing this week? I think I can probably guess. This one or two. <laughs> I'm very, very happy that this game is finally out. Are you enjoying yeah. it? Is it living up to your expectations? Yeah, it, it's even better than I thought it was going to be. I already had quite high expectations of it. And basically they've taken the world that I fell in love with and they've just expanded it and they're just showing us kind of the new area of Kanaka. Uh, which is where Corvo grew up and it's quite interesting like you know depending on who you play as you're kind of going around I'm playing Emily she's walking around Kanaka going oh, this is where my dad grew up this is weird it's like if I went to like Lincoln and just walked around <laughs> and went oh this is cool only like there's like murder and blood flies <laughs> is that what Dishonored 2 is like you going to Lincoln yeah <laughs> 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 One cool thing is the Duke is played by a guy called Vincent, the same person who Vincent plays the Donofrio, King... Vincent Donofrio, right? Yeah, the Kingpin in the Daredevil series. For those poor fools who make their trade on the waters, I wish them luck. So I was wandering around Kanaka hearing all these voiceovers being like, I'm in Hell's Kitchen. I had to pause the game and look it up because <laughs> I was like, same. who is that? Like I tweeted it out and these, a number of people went, did you have to pause on IMDb? Like I, I was like, <laughs> yes, I had to check if it was him. If you don't watch Daredevil, he's also mm. the guy in Full Metal Jacket who can't keep it together oh. because of the horrors of war oh. in the training camp. Also, oh, he's the bad guy in Jurassic World. Yeah. And there's also uh, Rosario Dawson, I think, who's like the nurse in yeah. Daredevil. Yeah, that's right. She is like your helper who takes you around places. You won't get far with that face, stamped on half the coins in the city. So it's yes. just like, if it's you're like a bit a of a Marvel fan, yeah. and you're like, oh, this is cool. But yeah, I'm really loving it. I'm like going through it fairly slowly because I'm trying to ghost it, stealth, no kills, knock everyone out, um, which can be a bit frustrating. Like I, I went through like a whole level not realising, because in the first game, you couldn't check to see your stats as you were playing, to see if anyone had seen you. You just had to kind of play and go, I hope no one saw me. But I didn't realise in Dishonored 2, they've got a lovely screen that you can just check. So before oh, you auto save you. and ruin your save, you can check, did someone see me? Because sometimes they can be alerted to a present, but they, they've not seen you. They might think you're just like, a rat or a blood fly. Yeah, or like throwing things. a bottle or something like that. Yeah. yeah, it's slow progress for me mm. uh, because I'm just like, I need to assess this whole situation, make sure I don't get seen. But I'm absolutely loving it. I love the new characters. I'm really intrigued to find out more about Delilah. And who does her hair? I know, it's amazing. And all the roses. But it, it's quite funny how, like, Dishonored 2 for me 
is more unnerving and scary than Dishonored 1. Like, in Dishonored 1, you've got a horrible rat plague, everyone's dying. Why? And Why it's is it freaking fun. you out? But it's, it's something that's just like an extra layer of darkness to it. And when you first start Dishonored, you've got like already an established team. Whereas it, like in Dishonored 2, you, know, you only have the one person um, helping you and you have to gradually build up your team. It's, it's something more oppressive of it because it feels like a grander thing is happening. Also, You're just a tiny cog yeah, yeah. in a big government machine. Yeah, and man. also the blood flies yeah. are... Mm, that's that's a more gruesome de like because all the people who died of the rat plague they were all like tied up in body bags already. The blood flies like lay eggs in them and stuff, so sometimes you can see a body in and there's just something growing out of them, and that's where all the blood flies hatched. And just the nests in general are just really like horrible, like they're these big husks with like the main thing in the middle, and like you get to some of them and they're already dead, and so you're just. It's <laughs> the circle of life, Ellen. Mm. Maybe they've got their own thing, coup going on in the ha in the maybe, hive. Maybe, maybe there's like a renegade aunt bloodfly who's come back to the nest, and she's I'm like, "I'm too busy uh, shooting incendiary bolts at them to destroy them all very quickly and stealthily." Tip. That's some, a tip. Something to do with your incendiary bolts if you're playing it on stealth mode, because otherwise they're just going to stack up in your inventory and take yep. up loads of space. Yep. Not that I'm bitter. <laughs> Are you liking it? You like it? I am loving it. I'm really loving it. Great. Um, but I've also been playing another game, which what? I know you You can't been, do two you've games. Been, I'm not saying two games. I'm using this to pass it's a the baton. This, this better be a segue. Go. This is a segue. I've mm -hmm. also been playing Watch Dogs 2, which it was I a segue. <laughs> you have been playing. Yes, I have. <laughs> Yes, I've been playing uh, Watch Dogs 2. It's good mm -hmm. fun. I, I do really like it, but it kind of has this feeling like it's a sort of hacking mod for GTA, maybe? Yes. Do you, do you sort of know I what I mean that. a little bit? The actual um, the actual hacking mechanics are, I'm, I'm really fond of, and the way yeah. that they've mapped that to, to the shoulder button so you can get to it really quickly. Mm -hmm. And once you start memorising which of the um, uh, face buttons, uh, the, the sort of shortcuts for which hacking actions, mm -hmm. it all gets uh, a lot more sort of fast paced. Yeah. And a lot more exciting. I like little toys and the robots. And oh, and I like being in open world San Francisco. Um, mm -hmm. That's just really, really nice. It, yeah. it, it looks beautiful. Uh, tried to swim to Alcatraz. Um, I think you can do it, but I got really bored. It's so it's a long far. Way. So I swam back <laughs> and got a boat and took the boat. And the other thing that I'm enjoying about it what is the really, really sort of overblown uh, sort of hacker aesthetic yeah. to the whole thing. Um, I mean, when I started the game, I was like, this is so ridiculous. <laughs> it's not like, this isn't anything like what hacking is probably actually like. Yeah. It's, you know, it's all, all this kind of like backflips and parkour yeah. and trendy headphones and cool <laughs> clothes and, uh, you know, all, all that sort of stuff and like graffiti and movement, kind of youth thing. Um, you thing. A youth thing. <laughs> Do you know? Is you? You thing. <laughs> Yo yo's. Pogs. Pokemon. Pokemon. <laughs> uh, actually, I I love that aesthetic. Yeah. I have I've had my mind completely changed to it just playing the game for a bit, and now I really like sort of weird synthy music yeah. and the crazy graffiti and the whole kind of. It just makes me feel like I'm in Hackers, starring uh, Angelina Jolie and uh, Johnny Lee Miller from the from the mid '90s. It's not just something they do. You sure, this sweet machine's not going to waste. Are you challenging me? <laughs> it's all like. Freak the system yeah. and stuff, spelled P-H. Oh, Freak. amazing. Hack the Gibson, people. Hack the planet. Hack the planet. Hack the planet! So I, I kind of like that. It's weird. I think I think they've tried to make it feel very modern and cutting edge and sort yeah. of set in a smart city, mm -hmm. high-tech environment. But to me, it just feels like a real throwback to a kind of um, like mid-90s view of what hacking and computer yeah. stuff was. Yeah. But I like that. It's really fun. I've been enjoying it. Mm. Um, I did a side mission where I like took down a new age church that are all kind of very much Scientology. There's a oh, lot, yeah, of, yeah. lot the, of references you, yeah, to yeah. real life. Mm. I went to uh, my first ever time in America ever was this year where I, I went to San Francisco. But it was quite fun driving around and being like, yeah, like going along <laughs> Pier 39 and being like, that's where the sea lions are. <laughs> that was actually, you were you were with me the first time yeah. we booted up Watch Dogs 2 and the first yeah. thing we did was we went straight to the we equivalent like, of the pier. We had to go and see the and sea we were lions. Like, where are the sea lions? And they are there. If you go in the game, they are there. And if you climb onto their stinky little uh, platforms, sea lion platforms, yeah. then they all try and <laughs> swim away. And if you try and chase them, you can't catch them as far as I can tell. If you've been able to catch a sea lion, <laughs> then, you know, get in touch because... 
I just feel like with all the technology at my disposal, I should be able to get one in a tank. An ethical tank, a massive I, tank. But I'm always going to be like, get one and like one, have know. it like be your buddy and yeah. help you swim across to Alcatraz faster. Exactly. Show up at Dead Set headquarters being like, yeah, this is our new hacker in the team. He's, Flappy. He's called Flappy <laughs> Muck Smells Terrible. <laughs> Can you hack them and get personal information about the seeds? <laughs> yeah. Likes fish. Yeah. Like eight Barry's seaweed. Four years old. <laughs> Watch Dogs 2 though. It's, um, I'm enjoying it. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's um, good. There's a lot out at the moment, so we're just yeah. trying to play games as fast <laughs> yeah. as we can. Yeah. Anyway, uh, another big release this mm -hmm. week is a remaster, <gasps> and I want to talk about that with you, Ellen. Ooh. Can you restore the balance? So a remastered, or war-mastered as they're putting it, version of 2010 hack and slasher Darksiders is one of the big releases this week. Uh, but with so many remasters flying around, and this trend definitely isn't, doesn't seem to be going anywhere, I think it's time we learned more about it by mining Ellen's brain for wisdom ore. So, Ellen, I'm going to ask you some questions about remasters. <laughs> Sorry for one second. I thought you were going to say wisdom or something else. Wist yeah. But or, like, but, yeah, yeah, or, or, or. I've actually got you, yeah, I do yeah, have for the, wisdom. For the raw materials in your head with which we will build a great edifice of knowledge. First question, Ellen. Uh, so, Grand Theft Auto V, Last of Us Remastered, uh, Halo Master Chief Collection, um, Grim Fandango Remastered. These are all video games, and you know what they have in common? They've all had remastered versions in the last mm -hmm. couple of years. What do you think about these remakes? Do you like them, Ellen? Do you enjoy it when a game gets remastered, or would you rather developers spend their valuable time trying to make something new? Do you like remake culture? It's a mixed view because, uh, like, in a way, remasters are really good for kind of documenting what games that we've, you know, had in the past and allowing people to play it now, because often, Platforms no longer exist, so you can't play that game anymore. Sure. Um, so, like, y you have like the original Banjo Kazooie because they Rare brought out the Rare Replay. I was able to play it on Xbox One uh, despite never having an N64. And that's good. Pity me. Last year, I played Grim Fandango because it came out, and it was a game that I'd heard loads about, but I didn't have a PC to play it on. But then I could play it last year, and I was just like, this is the best, and it's nice being able to expose people who were perhaps too young or not born yet yeah. when, when games came out so that they can uh, play it and see see how far games have come and then also just enjoy some classics that I think like I mean, should be on you, every game of like belt. Yeah, checklist. I totally agree with you. The only thing that slightly bugs me occasionally is when the remastered versions are quite expensive. Yes. Especially sort of if you already owned the originals. Yeah. And it feels a bit weird charging sort of full price for, for them. I don't yeah, know. like you get some games that are like, oh, we've just up the graphics and you can have it because you already had the original. That's mm. really nice. I played uh, the first Tomb Raider uh, of the, the new series on 360 and then it came out on like Games with Gold um, for free and I was like, yeah, I'll get that. That's yeah. great. Fine. Yeah. But I wouldn't bother having played it like two years previously and it looked fine graphically to then play like the cool shiny remastered version for another 40 quid. They shouldn't just be a cash grab of, oh, we can do more stuff now, they're done. It's it's more... So, yes to remasters, yeah. no to cash grabs. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Darksiders War Mastered uh, is, is about 15 quid, which oh, I think is brilliant. It's about the right price for us all. Yeah. Remaster, that's pretty good. Um, unless, of course, you buy the collector's edition. There's a particular collected, collector's edition of Darksiders War Mastered. Mm -hmm. It's called the Scalding Gallo. Ellen, how much do you think it costs? What do you guess? Is it going to be ridiculous? It's going to come with some collectible. It's going to be like a hundred. <laughs> okay, sixty-six thousand six hundred pounds. <laughs> what? Is it made of gold and diamonds and platinum and every rare metal under the sun? It's called the Scalding Gallo. It includes the game. Plus, <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> can you guess what it includes? You bought the game. 
What would you expect to get for over £66,000? I think there's only one of these on sale. <sighs> Theoretically. No one's gonna buy it. You'd have to be crazy. It's gonna be like a flat. <laughs> like a nice, like cheap, really cheap flat in yeah. London. Comes with a deposit, <laughs> deposit. <laughs> to get on the property lab. Yeah. Is it like a life-size statue of the main character nope. or something? Um, armor, nope. right, so you can cosplay it. Nope. Um, uh, is it just like a, a trip somewhere? You might need planning permission for it. Is it an actual gallows that you can set up in your <laughs> It's in not. Your, it's, <laughs> it's not an actual <laughs> no, gallows. You had a look in yeah, your eye. Yeah, yeah. Shut up, Mike. <laughs> it is a Darksiders branded horse stable that can stable two horses. <laughs> they actually say that can stable two phantom horses because they're a thing from the game, but I think that's just a fun joke. I guess you could also fit a regular horse in it. It's a stable, I don't know. It also includes, as if that wasn't enough, a tack room with floor and a three by 3.6 meter hay barn. So you get a floor, one floor in one room. Amazing. Uh, oh my yeah. goodness. Tack room with floor and a hay barn. Ellen. Right. As well as remakes and remasters, there are demakes where you take a newer game and uh, it gets reprogrammed as if it came out earlier. This tends to be a fan-made thing and they're very, very cool. A yeah. good example is Super Smash Land, which is Super Smash Brothers, made to look uh, as if it is on the Game Boy. And this is playable and it's incredible and I really want us to play it at some point, okay? Um, but my question to you, Ellen, is which new game would you like to go retro? Ooh, ooh. Well, like, in my head, it's, it like immediately sprang to like Assassin's Creed, but you kind of got that already with the Chronicles series, because that's very much like Prince of Persia old oh, school yeah. games. Yeah. What about Dishonored 2 as a sort of Pac-Man style game where the ghosts are guards and you have to eat all of the fruit? There is fruit in Dishonored 2. Yeah, there is. There's a lot of fruit. Yeah, no, Dishonored might be a good one because, you know, like teleport across and just have like different routes that you have to avoid. like. Something kind of like old school um, Metal Gear type stuff, something like that. There's a lot of cool like pixel art games coming out. A little, a little pixel Emily with Aww. like the thing would be so cute. Yeah, Idle animation, I'm, like. Yeah, that's the thing. In this, in this, in my head, all I'm thinking is which characters would look adorable as pixel sprites. And it's, so far, it's like Evie and Jacob and Emily. It's a good way to think about it. Yeah. A top down remake of GTA 5. Yeah? That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. There must that be a mod. Be. Must be a mod that puts oh, the camera way be. up in the sky. Must There's a mod be. for everything these yeah. days. Good answer, Ellen. Um, and finally, if you could remaster any object from your childhood, what would you pick? My hamster. <laughs> 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 With new, new improved yeah. graphics. <laughs> Why would it be evil? Why Zombie it, hamster! Why would it have to be as... Oh, because it's died. Because it's dead! <laughs> I'm sorry, Ellen. Poor Nibbles. Nibbles! <laughs> he was horrible. He's not a very nice hamster. Um, he picked on my other hamster, that's why. Nibbles and Nora. Oh. <laughs> why haven't you picked Nora? Yeah, you why did you I should, you? Because <laughs> she had. she was very tired and I just let her rest. Um, <laughs> Yeah, let's definitely bring Nibbles back. Nibbles the murdering bully hamster. It'd it be, it be like more fun in video games though, so that's the thing. Um, it's not a video game. Oh, it's not nothing to do, so just in general. Yeah, yeah, it's remastered in your um, new life. Do you know what I'd like remastered from my childhood? What? Is those, that like tricycle? You know, like little trike you have, yeah. or the one, it's like a sort of colorful, like egg-shaped car and you sort of push yourself along Flintstones oh, style. Yeah, yeah. Do you mean the little tyke's cozy coop? Little tykes, is that the, with the yellow arch yeah, bits? And it's got actual doors, the yeah. work. Yeah, Aww. trust Mike to know the, cool. the very first car yeah. that most kids are exposed to. I tell you what I would like to remaster yeah. is my PlayStation 1. And well, that's your PlayStation 4. Yeah, I know, I know, but like, it's it's something special about when you really had to press in the button and then the, the start oh, noise, okay, the okay. music. Or my Nintendo Game Boy, like original, like the yellow brick one, because it's kind of not working anymore despite me putting new batteries in it. Let's go on eBay, get a Game Boy Pocket. It's really uh. expensive now, they're all being bought up by ironic chiptune artists. Ah! Uh. <laughs> Why won't chiptune artists let me have one thing? <laughs> one thing? What else have they 
taken from you. <laughs> How long do you have? <laughs> right, you know you were saying about the, the, the tricycles and then the car thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A similar thing to that. I had one that was like a rocking horse, um, but it was, it was there was a big wheel in the middle yeah and then smaller wheels on either side so you could like rock back and forward but you could scoot along at the same time the saddle came up and you could put things inside it, and it was storage can't do best. that with a real horse no not no. legally and there's a picture my mum's got of me on it and i look so happy with myself so yeah so remaster that <laughs> yeah for like adult size and make it um socially acceptable for me to ride it <laughs> Get on that EA. We want remastered hobby horse. We have no more information. Yeah. Than that. <laughs> like to remaster society's attitudes towards growing women on hobby horses. Yeah, and scooters. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of secretly want to ride a scooter around, but I know I'd look, everyone Me looks too. really silly. Yeah. Uh. Okay, well done, Ellen. I feel like we learned a lot about the art of remastering. Yeah. The making new. Of making the making old. new of the old. Reshaping the old clay into a new and better vase <laughs> for £20. Anyway, yeah. let's find out what you guys have been saying. Recently, we took to Skyrim as Kippers the Khajiit to play with a mod that adds catnip to the game and had ourselves a little sing song along the way. Meow, 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 meow. <laughs> Commenter QTube says, Meow Elder Scrolls theme, new intro music for the show of the weekend, please. Well, we can't do that for legal reasons, but here's the next best thing. On last week's episode, I played Joking Hazard, the card game from the creators of Cyanide and Happiness. Arthur Stahl says, Ellen likes cyanide and happiness. If Luke says he likes Monty Python in the next video, my life will be complete. Uh, some of the weirdest sketches mainly send me to sleep, or in Roman, Romanus Aunt Domus. Anyway, we also had Mike come along and help us defuse some bombs totally safely. Press and immediately release the button. So like, tap it. Yeah! Oh. <laughs> Seconds to spare. We are the most amazing bomb diffusers of all time. Yes. Commenter Lucas M remarked, I guess we know who they think is the most dependable or expendable. E e expendable? Hey Ellen, dependable, expendable, can't it be both? Anyway, in our museum video, I also disclosed a geeky proclivity of mine. In fact, hang on, the serpents and the tomb look like the ones in the museum gift shop. Did the museum know it was down there all along? Is there just some big conspiracy? Why are there no pencils in the gift shop for me to buy for my collection? Corey Miller says, Ellen has a pencil collection? Well, she could have led with that. Oh, Corey Miller, you've always got 2B clever in the comments. Get it, because 2B is a kind of pencil. Don't keep making puns. Like, his one, like, fundamentally doesn't work because pencils are actually made from graphite. Anyway, let's check out what fun stuff we did by accident this week. So Ellen, you're a very chatty person, but we also learned recently that your stomach has a personality of its own. <laughs> your stomach? <laughs> no, did you hear that? Wow. Was that picked up on the mic? <laughs> 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 Ellen must feed. Another great evil awakens from its slumber. Don't you mean awakens from its ombre? Why do you say that? Well, don't you spoonerize everything now? You're not a superior species if you can't open a fan of cant. <laughs> See, what a good job. What a good job we rehearsed. Yeah, well, oh no. What's that? It's Andy's charge cable. What happens if his battery runs out? Oh, the Citadel is Reaper made too. All my favorite shops are there. Andy, Andy. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Do come back next week, like and subscribe. Check out our pals over at Outside Xbox, and we will see you in seven days.